Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh May all the peace and blessings of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of us As you can see today I want us to delve, dive and navigate through the mechanism of opening and closing of the stomata And we know that uh, basically these are explained by uh, several theories and we are going to discuss some of the theories that explain the mechanism of opening and closing of the stomata uh, with the help of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let's start with the first theory. That is the photosynthetic theory. We have the starch sugar into conversion theory, sometimes known as the pH theory. And finally we have uh, the potassium ion theory. In this lesson we may be able to delve into finer details about the first two theories that is the photosynthetic theory and the starch sugar interconversion theory, basically known as the pH theory. Now, without wasting time, let's start with the first one, that is the photosynthetic theory. And what are, how does it explain the mechanism of opening and the closure of the stomata? And what principles does it employ so that it can validate the mechanism of opening and closing of the stomata? Now, let's start with the first one. Now, as you can see here, this is the structure of a gut cell. The gut cell is being surrounded by the epidermal cells. And this is the thin outer walls of the epidermal cells. We have the chloroplast. We have the nucleus of the chloroplast. We have the stoma and finally the gut cell itself. Now, how does this theory explain? You see, during the day, the chloroplast, this chloroplast, in the cytoplasm of the gut cell, photosynthesizes. And we know why during the day, the chloroplast in the gut cell are able to photosynthesize. Because they are able to trap the sunlight energy from the sun, the light energy from the sun, which is used in breaking water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen gas. And from there, the process continues from light to dark state until finally the sugar is, or rather the glucose, is being produced. Now, we say that during the day, the chloroplast in the gut cell, or in the cytoplasm of the gut cell, photosynthesize. Now, once they photosynthesize, they produce sugar. Now, the sugar is osmotically active. And when we say it is osmotically active, basically mean it is going to bring about the osmotic effect where water molecules will be drawn from the adjacent epidermal cells since the osmotic pressure of the gut cells is high because of the accumulation of the glucose being formed as a result of the process of the photos of photosynthesis and therefore water molecules will be drawn into the gut cell as more water is drawn into the gut cell the thicker inner walls of the gut cell bulge outwards. They become tajik, bulge outwards, and hence the stoma opens. That's done. At night, however, there is no photosynthesis. Simply because there is no light energy from the sun. Now what happens? Glucose in the gut cell, or rather the starch, the, the sugar, is converted to starch. Get this concept right. At night, however, there is no sunlight, meaning there will be no photosynthesis. Now, the sugar or other glucose form will be converted to starch, and we know that the starch is osmotically inactive. Basically means the osmotic pressure in the gut cells is going to drop as compared to the one in the surrounding adjacent epidermal cells. And guess what? Through the process of osmosis, water molecules will be drawn from the gut cells into the adjacent epidermal cells. And once they are drawn to the adjacent epidermal cells, what follows next is that the gut cells shrinks and becomes plasmalized. And hence, the stoma closes. That is basically how the photosynthetic theory explains the mechanism of opening and closing of the stomach. But however, this theory was found to be unsatisfactory. Why? Because we have some plants that open 
their stomata at night and close it during the day. And therefore, the theory basically is mostly dwelling on the opening of the stomata specifically during the day, bearing in mind on the formation of glucose as a result of the process of photosynthesis that do take place during the day. At night, however, there is no photosynthesis due to the absentia of the sunlight, and hence, therefore, glucose will not be formed. Now, these are clear validation. On the other hand, we have some plants which are exception to, the, to this. Therefore, the theory has not enveloped the diverse plants which show an opposite to the way it has put it. And therefore, the theory is found to be unsatisfactory. Now, let's go to the next one. That is the shortcoming. The starch sugar interconversion theory. Now, the starch sugar interconversion theory, what does it employ? It employs the mechanism called the pH theory. We know that when the process of photosynthesis takes place, it uses up the carbon peroxide. And we know that carbon peroxide, when it dissolves in water, it becomes an acidic solution. And therefore, we have some nanometallic oxides. Once they dissolve in water, they become acidic. Carbon peroxide, sulfur peroxide, nitrogen peroxide, and phosphorus oxides. Those are nonmetallic elements. Upon dissolving in water, they form acidic solution. And carbon peroxide being among the nonmetallic element that dissolves in water to form an acidic solution. When it is used up during the day in the process of photosynthesis, that means the acidity of the of the acidity is being reduced. And once the acidity reduces, that means the pH is increasing and the alkalinity is also increasing. And once the alkalinity increases class, it activates enzymes which catalyze the hydrolysis of starch into...